Guys, we'll go ahead and get started uh, so that you can get out of here as quickly as possible. We won't want to take up your entire um, conference hour. This is Tracy Harris. She's at JTSD. Uh, she was also a Tech Academy instructor, learner, teacher, facilitator, owner, I don't know, whatever, for a while. Um, I guess everyone had an opportunity to watch the flip learning video. It was fantastic. <laughs> I forgot I'm being videoed. <laughs> Let's start over. Sorry, Dr. Chastain. It was really good. Um, <laughs> you guys all know what good teaching is. And if you don't, then you're in the wrong place. Okay. Sorry. I I like, I really like what I do. I don't like being told how to do my job. So everything that I do, I made up on my own. I studied myself. And so when this is, this is not, I've made this mine to some degree, and Tracy, I think maybe, maybe you add a little bit to it. Um, I did not add the new symbol to the district. <laughs> yes, this is good, yeah. Um, I'm not going to say anything because I'm not going to uh, Underline is what I feel to be most important in this entire list. If you don't know something, ask, seek out new information again. Everything I've done, everything I use, I've taught myself. So I don't go to PDs to learn the newest and greatest <coughs> things. Actually, most of the stuff that I get from PD, I kind of leave behind. And then if I think it's important, I'll take it with me. And then if I don't look at it in three months, I throw it away. So, and you know, you've, you've got to figure out what's best for you. There's no way you could possibly use all the new technology stuff and keep your sanity. So figure out what's best for you and fit, fit your classroom, your teaching style, and then use it until it runs out. Um, yeah, any questions? Sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the four main bullet points are what the presentation is all about. I added the two in the middle. Um, you will spend, if you are interested in flip, flipping your classroom, you will spend a lot of time. A lot of time. I, yes, there's, I, I am working more now than I did in the first 18, 20 years of my teaching career. But I'm enjoying it more. There's a lot more that I, I do. I get to lot, see the kids, talk to the kids more than I ever have. I know my kids better than I ever have. Um, and the video that Mr. Chastain made, or Dr. Chastain, sorry. Um, <laughs> there's, there's really not one way to flip the class at all, not one way. And I, I don't know if that video brought that out. But when reading about the flip classroom, they make that very clear. So make it, make it fit, your need, fit your needs, I should say. So this is basically what we're going to cover today. And I think it's dependent upon what subject area you teach as well. It lends itself quite nicely for your core common subject areas. But again, going back to what Greg said, you need to make it work for how you see it to be working in your classroom, whether it be an arts classroom or just your core classes. It's not one particular style that you have to do. <laughs> I was sitting here, I just realized that I haven't really talked about the flipped classroom, and that's the whole point. The video should have told you about the flipped classroom. It's not watch a video at home and take notes and then come back to school the next day and hear your teacher say the exact same thing all over again. That's not good. How about that? It's a um, shortened, condensed version. Yeah. You're trying to get it to them in a condensed version, so it's not time consuming. It's anywhere from five to eight minutes long. There's no point if you're going to have them watch that video just to say the same thing again in class. So up here, I've put numbers next to the ones I feel to be most important <coughs> in regards to the benefits of flipped classroom. Uh, the instructional time as the kids go home, they can continue what they've done in class or move on to the next lesson in class before they come back to class the next day. Um, differentiation, that's the big key term, I guess, in classrooms today so that clearly you can meet individual student needs through this model. Like I said, number three, I know my kids better now than I ever have in the first 20 years of my teaching career by just standing in front of the room and lecturing to them. I actually work with them and talk with them and get to know them. And that leads, that, that helps a ton with differentiation if you know where they're coming from. 
um, support of the home parents or know, know exactly what the kids are doing and what they should be doing, what they're responsible for, and that helps with accountability. And then uh, review, I mean, it's, it, the videos are great to, for the kids to go home and watch and get prepared for tests or quizzes or whatever. Or if they don't understand something, they can rewatch it. And the great thing, it's always there. So if you have students that are absent or absent a lot, they can still get the material when even they're at home. <clears throat> I asked Mr. McGee for this permission to do this, and he's not responded. So I'm, a lack of an answer means yes. Um, at this point, if you're not interested in a flipped classroom, there's no point in you staying for the rest of the presentation. And I'm being very serious. If you're, if you, yeah, if you don't want to do it, you can leave. No one's going to tell on you. No one's going to. Yes, we're videotaping. We're videotaping me. But if you're, if you're not interested, then go. Seriously, come on. <laughs> we're not tricking you. Whatever. Um, lots of upfront work. Uh, making the videos took a lot of time. Now, I flipped my class, the entire class, not just a unit, not just a um, chapter, the entire class. So it was a lot of, a lot of time spending, spent making the videos um, and then getting all the materials prepared. And everything um, so there's just there is a lot of work I again I'm working more now than I ever have but I also um, am still putting in a lot of time even though the videos are made I'm still putting in a lot of time because I'm constantly tweaking it and making it fit better I over the summer I already have a list of things I have to do as far as improving my videos because some of my videos are entirely too long um, we use Blackboard here at the high school, so that's that's a nice place for them to keep the videos. I think Google Classroom will allow for those videos to be posted too if we ever make that switch, but I don't know. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of decisions to make in regards to flipping your classroom. And like it says, start small, just try one class. I don't start small. I don't do things that way. When I when I make a decision, I go with it, and I sometimes I regret it, but most of the time it works out. But for those people that just don't jump in whole hog, start with something small like a unit or if you want it to just be an introductory or anticipatory video for what you're doing the next day, I think that's okay too. Um, and then also in the video, Dr. Chastain said that you should be or thinking about making all of your own videos. There were many times when I did it for my math classes that if I could find something that worked and it was already made, like Learn Zillion, it worked quite nicely for me then I could post those things and it saved me a little bit of time. And Greg is right, the very first year that you do it, it is a lot of a lot of time finding or making and putting together your materials that you're using. But I really did find the reward in it that I could actually work with my kiddos that truly, truly needed my assistance. And the ones that were doing really well at the material, then I could push them even farther in the class. So. Um, don't think that you have to make your videos every single time. If there's a good resource out there that you're using and it works for what it is that you're teaching, then make sure that you use those materials. Um, again, with technology, it's very easy to get overwhelmed with everything that's out there. I don't use anything on the left-hand side. Half the stuff, I don't even know what it is. Um, the right hand side I, for my videos I use Screencast-O-Matic. It's a pretty simple program to use. And then I like the video note.es um, for students. As they watch my video, it's it's a lecture, it just replaces me in the classroom and they, they take notes using that program. And then I get a copy of that just to check their progress and their understanding. And so next year, whenever they get a device, whatever that may be, I plan on using that a lot more um, instead of them Having, having them handwrite their notes, but those are the only two on the right-hand side that I use. I've tried Educanon and it's okay. It's just one of the many things that are similar to everything else, just with a different name. So find say, out couple, what's what you like. A couple of these are very much similar in the fact that you just upload your video <laughs> and then it can pause and you can ask questions as you're going through and they have to answer them before the video will move on again. So. I would agree with Greg. I always use Screencast-O-Matic because it was easy. I didn't have to log in. All I had to do was hit the start record button. The little dotted box would pop up and I just overlay it to whatever it is I want to make my video with. And then I could make it in different file formats and upload it. It would 20 minutes of time and then I was done. 
No iPads. Um, I know, Mr. McGoon, you've tried it and used it a little bit. Do you have videos online? Chemistry? Oh, me? Yeah. yeah. A couple. Yep. I did it with um, some videos that were already done, yep. and they're way too long. So recently I started doing just little clips, like five minute clips. Yep. But I think I need to embed questions in it because <coughs> I still have some kids that, even though it's five minutes and they can read it on their phone, won't do it. And it's yep. the ones that need to do it that won't do it. Yeah, that's where Educanon would come in real handy because it. It will not let, let them won't let them proceed in the video until they until they do that. anybody else ever, anybody tried it? Yeah, you like it? Don't like I do. it? It has I, benefits. I don't lecture much. Yeah. But yeah, um, last year when we had that <clears throat> weird early release on that snow day, do you remember that? Yeah. Um, I was teaching researching skills, and it was this really important thing that I needed to teach, and so um, only a half of my classes got the lesson. So I just made a video before I left that day and posted it on Blackboard for the other half. And it was actually really nice. Yep. So. Art, PE, uh, I can't speak to music, but I would imagine music, choir, band. They've been flipped since the beginning of time. They just don't call it flipped. I mean, this is nothing new. It's just a name put to something. So I've enjoyed it. I, there's a lot of great benefits. I don't think I'll ever go back to just straight lecture in a class. Um, I haven't really talked much about how to do it, and I don't think that's what this is for. Um, if you're interested, it, it'll be easier for me to sit with you one-on-one -on -one or in a small group uh, and like go over like actually how to do it if you're interested in doing it. It's a lot easier. Yes? Um, do you, do you feel like, because I'm kind of camera shy, I wouldn't mind doing this, but I do have to have a face You don't have to. It can just I be your know. voice. No, no, I won't do that. Yeah. The yeah. great the great thing about Screencast-O-Matic is that you can put it over whatever it is that you're wanting to show. Like if you, I always had Smart Notebook and I had lesson through Smart Notebook and I would just lay it over the slide and then I wore a headset with a microphone <coughs> on it and I would talk into the microphone and talk the problems with the kiddos. I never wanted to be <coughs> on the camera. Yep. It was not going to happen. I don't even like to hear my voice recorded. So. Yeah. That's why I always like to try to find videos that were already made, that were well produced, that taught the same things, and I didn't have to. But Screencast-O-Matic is definitely the way to go to be able to do that. Yeah, I don't watch my own videos. Yeah. I don't like myself on camera. I don't like what I sound like. I can't, I'm sorry to all of you who have to listen to me. Um, yeah. Kids who don't have computers, they get CDs or flash drives with videos. They get hard copies. Uh, that question was last asked in the last session about what do we do with the kids that don't have the technology at home. So flash drives, and if they don't even have a computer at home, then you know I'm here before school, after school, like the rest of us are. It's just like tutoring. Anytime the kid needs help, you're here to help them. Um, ELO helps a ton, and then uh, before school, after school, star. Yeah. Whoops. Forgot <laughs> star. Yes. Um, how do you structure it? Um, do you give them like a week, like you have these three videos and you have these watched by Friday next week? Um, I try to do, like daily videos. max, I try to do one video a week. One video a week? Max, yeah. And do you still move on in class, even if they have, like you don't talk about those things in the video until after everybody's watched it? Or right, you... yeah. Okay. Yeah, the video, it's, they're, they're establishing background information that they will use and apply in class. And that becomes a struggle sometimes because we're crunched for time, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So you essentially only lecture eight minutes a week? Yes. And the rest of the time is one-on-one -on -one individual work or small group work. Is there some type of point evaluation for watching the video? Um, as they watch the video, they fill out notes for me. And then there's an accountability piece. They have to answer questions. Okay. Stuff they should have heard or written down in their notes. And then they submit that. It's a Google Doc. For that. That's it. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, if there's, if you have questions, email me. If, uh, otherwise, you know, I think we're finished. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys.